All right, Algebra 1B students. Welcome to part one of lesson 10-4. Uh, today we're going to be solving radical equations. We are in section 10-4, not section 10-3. 10, uh, 10 four, we're going to be solving radical equations, meaning equations that involve square roots. So essentially what we're going to do is turn the radical expressions that we've been simplifying into radical equations that we can then solve for a certain variable like x. Okay. Now, one important note, when we solve a radical equation, any equation that involves a square root, we need to check the answer that we got by plugging it back into the original equation because sometimes we'll find answers that don't actually work. So please be sure to go back and double check your answers, make sure that they work because sometimes, especially tomorrow, they will not work. Okay? Uh, but the type of equation that we're going to be solving today looks like this potentially, where you notice that my x is underneath a square root symbol. So eventually, I'm going to have to undo or get rid of a square root symbol. And just as a general note, uh, to get rid of a square root symbol, we square both sides of the equation. We square both sides. So uh, that's what I'm going to do as my last step in solving this equation. But the first thing that I need to do is always get the square root by itself. It needs to be all alone, nothing attached. So right now, I see that I have the square root of x plus 7 after that. So I need to get rid of that plus 7 by taking 7 away from both sides. Okay, so I'm going to take 7 away from both sides. And what I end up with here is the square root of x is equal to 9. The square root of x is equal to 9. And then uh, now that the square root is all by itself, all alone on the left side of that equal sign, I can simply square both sides, meaning raise them to the second power, to get rid of this square root symbol here. So by squaring both sides, I get rid of the square root symbol, and I end up with x is equal to 81, because that's 9 to the second power. 9 squared is 81. Okay, now, in order to make sure this works, I need to put 81 back in to my x. So the square root of 81, square root of 81 is 9. 9 plus 7, does that equal 16? Yes, it does. So check I'm good on that. So I got the square root symbol all by itself. I squared both sides. And then I plugged that answer back in to make sure it actually does make the equation true. Okay, so x equals 81 is my final answer there. x equals 81. Um, this is just another example uh, of that. But I want to show you uh, what this could look like if we have something like that. The square root of x plus 5 and the x plus, or sorry, x minus 5. The x minus 5 is all underneath that square root. And it's equal to, uh, let's say it's equal to a positive 2. It's equal to a positive 2. So x minus 5 all underneath the square root is equal to a positive 2. Again, I want to try to get the square root stuff all by itself. The good news for me here is that it is already all by itself. So I don't have to worry about anything, uh, taking anything away or adding anything on to get the square root symbol by itself. It is already by itself. So I will square both sides to get rid of this square root symbol. And so now I have x minus 5 without the square root symbol. That's the whole goal of squaring both sides. Is equal to positive 2 squared, that's 4. Positive 2 squared is 4. 2 squared is 4. And then to get x by itself, I just need to plus 5 on both sides to get rid of that, plus 5. And I get that x is equal to 9. x is equal to 9. 
Now, once again, I'm going to plug this 9 back in where x was in my original equation and say, well, square root of 9 minus 5, is that equal to 2? Well, 9 minus 5 is 4. Square root of 4, does that equal 2? Yes, it does. Check mark. I'm good to go. My final answer is x equals 9. Okay. So that's uh, getting rid of a square root by squaring both sides of the equation. Now, sometimes we will have radicals on both sides of the equal sign. We hope that when that happens, there is nothing outside of those square root symbols. Okay? What I mean by that is this. If I have the square root of x plus, let's say, 4 is equal to, I don't know, the square root of x minus 6. x minus 6, that sounds good. Now, I see a square root symbol on both sides of the equal sign, so I think that I should square both sides, especially because here, on the right side, I don't have anything else with my square root symbol. It's all by itself, just the square root of x minus 6. But when I square both sides, what I want you to notice is that uh, here, this would turn into a foiling situation. So I end up with x plus 8, square roots of x plus 16. It gets all complicated. Because I have this 4 outside of the square root symbol, okay? this 4 right here is what is causing me all of my problems. And it means I cannot answer a question like this. Cannot answer a question like that. However, we can answer a question like this, where I have square roots on both sides of my equal sign. But um, nothing is added or subtracted onto those square root symbols. So I can simply square both sides of this equation here where I have square root of 5t minus 11 equals the square root of t plus 5. If I square the left side and square the right side, what that does is undoes the square root symbols. It eliminates the square root symbols. It gets rid of the square root symbols. So that's gone and the squared's gone. So now I just have 5t minus 11. And on the right side, all I have is t plus 5 because I do the same thing over there. Get rid of the square root symbol. Now, this is an equation I expect uh, we can all solve by subtracting t, subtracting t, and then adding 11 to get rid of the 11. That's getting rid of the t plus 11. So 4t, that's what I have on the left side, 5t minus 1, is equal to 5 plus 11 is 16. Dividing both sides by 4 gives me t equal to 4. And t is equal to 4. Now, it's especially important to check our answers with these kinds of problems. So I'm going to take this t equals 4, and I'm going to put it back in there, and I'm going to put it back in there. Two different places now because I have two different places with a t. Um, so, the left side of my equal sign is the square root of 5 times 4 minus 11, and the right side is the square root of 4 plus 5. 5 times 4 is 20. Take away 11, that's the square root of 9. The other side, square root of 4 plus 5, square root of 9. Yeah, it works. They are the same. So, t equals 4 is my answer there. Now, I would like you to try this equation here with a square root on both sides. Uh, obviously, starting by squaring both sides, getting rid of those square root symbols, which we are allowed to do in this case. So, uh, pause the video and tell me, please, what is the solution or solve for x in that case by squaring both sides and then getting x solved by itself? So, pause the video, take a look there at got it number three. And then come on back and I will show you the correct answer. Okay, when I square both sides, those go away, go away. 7x minus 4 equals 5x plus 10. So I take away 5x, I take away 5x, I add 4 to get rid of that. That's gone. I have 4 there. 7 minus 5 is 2x. 
equals 10 plus 4 is 14, x equals 7. And then if I plug it back in there and there, I get 49 minus 4 under a square root, and I get 35 plus 10 under a square root. The left side is the square root of 45. The right side is also the square root of 45. Check mark, yep, they're both three square roots of 5, which we could simplify if we wanted. We don't need to do that, though. Our final answer is x equals 7. If you have questions about anything I did, solving for x by getting rid of square roots, please make a note to ask me in class tomorrow. Otherwise, that's all I have for you for now. Have a wonderful night.